Welcome to my channel. This is the Minolta X700 and I'm going to show you how to use it. This video is going to cover all the camera functions. It's going to show the evolution of the Minolta X700. It'll show you how to load film, use the camera, some advice on buying lenses and accessories for the X700 and some stuff not in the other reviews online. Minolta's camera designs evolved vigorously over a period of about 10 years. The X-E5 was a huge professional SLR that was available in the mid-70s. By 1977 the Minolta X-G2 was released, which followed the trend for smaller lighter SLRs that was pioneered by Olympus. This body shape evolved into the X-700. It was introduced in 1981 and produced until 1999. It's Minolta's last manual focus SLR and I absolutely loved using this camera. It won European Camera of the Year in 1981 and it was the first Minolta to accept a fast 3.5 frames per second motor drive rather than just an auto winder. Functionality such as remote control and time-lapse photography were offered through the optional control back. On the side of the camera it has the words MPS which stands for multi-program system. It's got a program mode and it's a system camera and I'll look at lenses and accessories later but I think the multi bit seems like it was added just to make a cool sounding acronym. Almost all X700s had a black coloured body, apart from a chrome version which was made just for the Japanese market. On the top right is the wind on lever. This button here at the front turns the camera on and off. To turn on the metering display you don't have to half depress the shutter, you just touch it with your finger lightly like that and that contact turns on the viewfinder display. The camera has three modes. There's metered manual where you set the shutter speed and the aperture. There's aperture priority automatic where you set the aperture and the camera sets the shutter speed or set to program and set the lens to the smallest aperture and the camera sets both the shutter speed and the aperture. You need to press this button here if you want to move the camera off of A or P settings. The shutter speed dial is very positive and you can easily move it with one finger while you're looking through the viewfinder. It goes from a thousandth to one second with a B setting and the flash sync is at a sixtieth of a second. On the top left of the camera is the usual fiddly ISO setting from this era but the exposure compensation is perfect. You just press that button and it moves really smoothly and there's an indicator in the viewfinder if you've set exposure compensation. The hot shoe is a standard hot shoe which can use most flash guns but it's got two extra contacts for TTL flash. This is the first Minolta camera with TTL flash metering. There are lots of models available. The Minolta 132PX can be found on eBay allowing you to use bounce flash which makes for better lighting than direct flash. They produced a ring flash as well and cables to allow off camera triggering. The rewind crank here is used to rewind the film after you've finished it. The viewfinder is very bright and clear. It's one of the best that I've used and it competes with the Olympus OM2. On the side of the camera here you can see the lens release button. You press that and turn and you can see the Minolta MD mount. The Minolta MD mount is different to the autofocus Minolta and Sony lenses. Those lenses are not interchangeable with the MD. You can't use them on this camera. There's a socket here for a shutter release cable and this is the depth of field preview so you can see the depth of field through the viewfinder at the closed down aperture. On the side of the camera here is the combined exposure lock and self timer. You press it down for the exposure lock and push it up for the self timer. On the bottom here's the cover for the battery. It takes LR44 batteries like most other cameras of the period did. There's the tripod socket. Here's the rewind clutch so you can rewind the film after you've finished it. And these bits here are the contacts for the motor winder. Grips on the front and the rear of the camera here make it very easy to hold and use. Loading the camera is very simple. You just pull this up and the back opens. You put the film cassette in here, pull the film across and push it through these clips here and then wind on a frame, close it and wind on another two. This is actually the easiest camera I've ever loaded. This is me loading a film first time. Normally when I make these videos I have to do several takes.
There you go. The lenses from Minolta are quite expensive. They made their own glass and it's very good quality. However, Nikon and Olympus have an affordable range of lenses covering like 35 millimeter and 100 millimeter, but Minolta glass costs a lot more for anything like that. If you have the money, the Minolta 100mm 2.5 has a great reputation and is quite compact. Even a poor condition instance will cost around £120 and that's about $150. However, the Minolta MD 35 to 105 is very affordable. Other non-Minolta brand lenses are also available. You can get a 135 Minolta MD, which is fairly cheap, which might do the job for you. The exposure meter seems reasonably accurate. I don't tend to rely on centre weighted metering or program mode. Film's quite expensive so I tend to use manual to make sure I get the exposure right. It's most useful when you give the camera to a non-photographer. Miriam, who's less of a photography nerd than me, explains how she got on with the X700. I have just used the Minolta X700. It is visually beautiful, lightweight and easy to use. The program mode makes it very quick to take pictures. The hand grips made it feel natural to hold. The viewfinder is clear and bright. I will choose this as a camera for myself or for any beginner or enthusiast. I like this camera a lot. Instead of selling it after I've finished, I'm going to sell off a different model from my collection, probably the X-D7. I'm not sure about the lens selection. This limits the camera a little. I may get the 35 to 105, which would be a good walkabout lens. It's a beautifully designed camera, which has great ergonomics. Is it good value for money? Well, if I were you, I'd check out the Minolta Dynax 5. It has most things the X700, plus matrix metering, autofocus, more modes, spot metering, and wireless TTL flash. A few years ago, the X700 would have cost about £50, that's $70. Now you see them for three times that, while the Dynax 5 is still about £25 with lens. But the X700 definitely has the edge in feel, looks and design. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video useful.